my name is Michael Aldrich. Uh, I've been in the marijuana movement since 1966. And at this conference today, which is called Cannabis Reentering Mainstream Medicine, I was thinking back to the early 60s, and two very important things happened in 1964 that are having an effect on us right now. Uh, the first one was that the uh, first legalized marijuana group in the world started in 1964. A young man named Lowell Egemeyer walked into a San Francisco police station and whipped out a joint and fired it up in front of the desk sergeant and said that he didn't think that marijuana should be illegal. And so the desk sergeant busted him and put him in jail and I don't know what the outcome was. I think he served a short sentence in prison and was released and never heard of again. But to that one act of civil disobedience, we owe the whole modern medical marijuana movement, including the movement to legalize all aspects of marijuana use. The other thing that happened in 1964 that's having a really important effect on this year uh, was that Gowney and Meshulam discovered the, uh, isolated and discovered the synthesis of the THC molecule and started the whole modern pattern of research uh, which is to investigate the chemical properties of the various cannabinoids and to find out which of those chemical properties translates into good medical effects for various medical conditions. And so here we are many, many years later, uh, like 45 years later, uh, talking about entering mainstream medicine. And what was happening in that ensuing period, I think, was simply a paradigm shift. A shift from the old concept of marijuana being a killer weed and violence, insanity, and death uh, to the new and more modern concept of this herb has benefits for all kinds of uses, whether it's recreational, social, or medical, or religious, or in terms of the industrial uses of hemp, there are many, many of those as well. So this is a multi-use plant which is finally in the 21st century coming into its own in a way that we started fighting for in the 20th century. I think the most important shift, of course, is the scientific basis of research. Now that we know that there is an endocannabinoid system operating in every human body on the planet, we are able to much more, um, we are able to better understand what's going on with the actual pharmacokinetics, the actual reactions of this drug in various parts of our body that is mediating and helping to modulate a whole bunch of different bodily systems. And that is a paradigm shift from thinking that marijuana is simply the stuff that hippies smoke while they're at protest marches, as it was in the 60s. So in my own lifetime, I have been very fortunate to see a translation from what was once really good 19th century medicine to what became very bad 20th century medicine in dropping marijuana out of the pharmacopoeia at all. And finally in the 21st century, marijuana medicine uh, coming into its own on a profound biological, even microbiological basis. And I think what that means for the future is that this conference is the type of a professional conference that will be happening a lot in the future, only there will be specific conferences about the medical value of cannabis and cannabis products in, for instance, treating AIDS patients or treating cancer patients. Or, what's even more important, is treating patients for diseases that haven't even come into epidemic proportions yet. Uh, when AIDS hit, it was a totally new shock, and we still haven't discovered how to cure uh, that virus. What we have discovered, though, is that this very old-fashioned herb works really well for helping people to be able to take their AIDS treatment drugs, for helping people to be able to take their cancer treatments, and for generally keeping the body in balance while these various attacks of diseases, as well as treatments, are going on within your own body. So I think that the, what's going to happen in this century with cannabis is a total paradigm shift that we are going to suddenly start regarding cannabis, as many of the patients do now, we're going to regard cannabis as a real drug that has potential in so many different fields. And I think that what we'll see at the end of this century is not only the full availability of the plant, perhaps used ritually or sacramentally by that time, 
but also of dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of different chemical compounds and uh, uh, compound drugs that are made from cannabinoids. And I think that we will have applications for diseases and medical conditions that we don't even exist right now, that we don't know anything about right now, and I will bet you my bottom dollar that marijuana will be helpful with those too. Thank you very much, sir.